Here we have a simplified drawing of a set X deposit. Um, we're going to use it to try and explain some of the observations that we saw in the Vulcan core from the 2022 Diamond Drill program. Set X forms on the ocean floor when you have what's called a rift basin. Um, rift basins form when plates start to pull apart from each other in opposite directions. And what this does is it causes tension and ends up forming these fault blocks where the center block drops lower and lower relative to the um, basin margins. While this is happening, it's creating space on the ocean floor and that space allows um, for catchment of um, sediments coming from the continents to flow in and eventually settle in and form thin strata at the bottom of the basin. In the Aldridge formation, we call this lowermost strata the, the lower Aldridge member, and it is comprised of thin to medium bedded argillites and wackies and subwackies. So as these quiet sediments are settling out on the ocean floor, we also get thinning of the crust, which causes superheated fluids carrying minerals to come up through these fault structures. And as they move up and they reach the ocean floor, they form vents, which then distribute mineralized sediments onto the seafloor. In our case, lead and zinc, forming stratiform lead and zinc mineralization. Now, while we get stratiform lead zinc mineralization proximal to the vent itself, we're also getting large plumes of lead and zinc throughout the basin that are thin as we move away from the vent complex. In the Aldridge formation, this time horizon, Sullivan time, is also called the lower middle contact because it is the stratigraphic contact between the quiet lower Aldridge sediments and what will eventually be the overlying thicker bedded middle Aldridge. So the time horizon of the Sullivan itself is called the LMC or the lower middle contact. Now, while mineralizing fluids exploit this fault, we'll also get other fluid events happening that eventually come through and rip up our sediments and form what's called fragmentals. Eventually, the mineralizing fluids are cut off from the source and regular sedimentation continues. So we have our main red ore band that is then slowly covered again by unmineralized sediments. Utilizing the same structure that the mineralizing fluids were, we end up getting intrusions coming in and in placing themselves into these wet sediments. And as this happens, it disrupts the wet sediments and forms fragmental mounds. Now the fragmentals are comprised of the exact same sediments that were right there. In this case, class of unmineralized wackies and argillites, as well as mineralized class of the pre-existing lead and zinc beds. Similar to these fragmental deposits are also called mud volcanoes. And what they'll do is they'll form these kind of cone shapes thickest around the vent itself and thinning as you move away from the vent. As you move away from the vent and the source of the energy, we lose our fragmental and thus the, the thin laminations remain. And there'll be a bit of a transition zone happening here where what we're likely going to see are some intact mineralized beds as well as mineralized and unmineralized class. When this fragmental event is finished, sedimentation continues from continents and the fragmentals are then buried by thicker beds 
of the Middle Aldridge Formation. Early interpretations of the Vulcan drill core is that we are close to one of these mineralized vent systems, but we're likely kind of proximal to it. So what we're seeing is we're not seeing the thick accumulation of lead zinc close to the vent, but likely what we're seeing is a more distal edge to it here. And in the core itself, we'll see the disrupted mineralized beds that are redeposited as fragmentals, as well as intact stratiform lead and zinc. So we're in the early stages of interpreting drill hole VU22004. Our current thinking is that we collared the hole in the middle aldridge. We drilled approximately 303 meters through the middle aldridge, which is comprised of thick to medium bedded argillites and wackies, until we hit the lower middle contact, or the Sullivan time horizon, at approximately 303 meters depth. We continued drilling through the LMC and intersected variably mineralized fragmental. At the top of the fragmental package, mineralization is quite weak, and it was previously intersected by two other drill holes in 1991 and 1992. In this program, we decided to drill through the fragmental to see if there was any mineralization missed by the previous holes. And what we saw as we drilled through the fragmental is that the clasts became more mineralized as we headed towards the base of the fragmental. So in the core here, this is a fairly classic fragmental texture. And what we're seeing higher up in the hole is a mix of mineralized and unmineralized clasts. And as we head through deeper into the hole, the mineralized class abundance increases. These dark clasts here are massive lead and zinc. Within the fragmental itself, we have undisrupted beds of massive lead and zinc. So these are intact beds that as the fragmental was disrupted, these intact beds would have been ripped apart and redeposited as rounded clasts. As we continued to drill through the fragmental, we eventually got into what we call a classic lower aldridge sediment. It's very thin bedded, comprised of argillites and wackies. Typically, this is where we would shut a drill hole down in the lower aldridge or through the, um, the horizon that we were, we were investigating. What we saw in this hole that was very interesting and that we don't see in many other places in the Aldridge Formation is mineralization in the undisturbed lower Aldridge sediments. And this started happening at around 440 meters to about 580 meters. We are in quiet, undisturbed lower Aldridge with high abundance of zinc, um, sphalerite, forming bands within. So the early interpretation here is that these bands that we're seeing under the fragmental are not actually primary and they've likely been remobilized from the main ore band higher up in the sequence and moved down in stratigraphy. This has only really been seen a couple times near the basin and one really good example is proximal to the North Star deposit um, near the Sullivan mine in Kimberley. So this is a really good indication that we may be close to a larger lead zinc body that has been remobilized and moved slightly down in stratigraphy. So moving forward, what we're what Eagle Plains is going to be working on is how now that we have hit what we're interpreting to be kind of the proximal edge of this ore band, how do we move towards the vent source where the mineralization will be thickest and most economic? This is essentially the deposit that we're looking for and hoping it, for it to be a Sullivan analog. Once drilling was completed, a geophysical survey crew returned to site and ran instruments down the borehole. And what that will do is it will identify conductive beds such as these pyrotite sphalerite galena rich beds and if they are in fact continuous lead zinc horizons they will form a conductive sheet and the results from the geophysics will help us vector towards the vent source 
of the, uh, of the deposit. The hole intersected the lower middle contact between thick and medium bedded middle aldridge and thin bedded and fragmental lower aldridge at around 303 meters. This transition is quite subtle from the thicker to thinner beds. It happens over about four core boxes. The transition itself is very important as it marks the top horizon of, of the Sullivan time. So as we continue drilling here, we pushed the hole deeper than originally planned as we wanted to reach the undisturbed lower aldridge sediments. As we hit these undisturbed lower aldridge sediments at around 480 meters, what we saw that was quite unusual here is that we should be well below the mineralized horizon at this point. But as we kept drilling, we kept intersecting banded sphalerite. So these are typical lower aldridge thinly bedded sediments. And within this, we get these thin maroon bands of massive sphalerite. Unlike the class that we saw in the fragmental that also had galena or lead mineralization, these are almost purely sphalerite and zinc. At this point, we're well below the horizon that we would interpret as the main ore horizon. And we are likely, what we're seeing now is impregnated sediments of remobilized zinc. So a secondary fluid would have come in it would have remobilized the zinc and moved it stratigraphically down into the permeable sediments of the lower aldridge formation. So as we kept drilling further down, we continued hitting sphalerite mineralization down to approximately 560 meters depth, significantly lower than our initial planned shutdown of the hole. This has been seen in other areas of the basin rarely. Um, the best example is near the ski hill in Kimberley, which is proximal to the North Star deposit, um, a fairly significant lead zinc mine that may or may not have been connected to the, to the main Sullivan at one time in its history. Drilling in 1991 intersected the top of this same fragmental interval that we intersected this year. However, they shut down just into the top of it. What they were seeing and what we again saw in this hole was dominantly pyrotite mineralized laminations that were disrupted and redeposited as fragmental. Very rarely within these pyrotite fragments, very rarely what we would see is very trace sphalerite or zinc along with this. So that is why we decided to continue drilling past where they shut down in 1991 to the base of the fragmental. Our observations from this year were that as we got deeper past the horizon where the hole in 1991 shut down, mineralization actually increased and it was never observed in this earlier hole. And that's why we decided to extend this hole almost 200 meters past its original planned depth as we continued to see mineralization that was um, unexpected and um, not present in, in historic drill holes. This interpretation of mineralization being significantly deeper than we initially had thought opens up the idea that many or all of these historic holes may have actually shut down shallower than the main, than the main mineralized horizon at the Hilo and the West Basin area. <laughs>